Hey, it's Drew Bennett from Big Damn Kid. It is January 23rd, and that means the 23rd issue of Transformers from 1986. This is actually the last issue from 1986 because it's from December of 1986, so then we're getting to 1987 with the next one. So, on this issue, we meet the Battle Chargers, Runabout and Runamuck, and they go on a cross-country graffiti spree. And this one is called... Decepticon Graffiti. So like American Graffiti, Decepticon Graffiti. And we have Circuit Breaker who is holding a brain unit of one of the Transformers contemplating how small it is and how it it uh, powers and uh, controls something so large. Uh, she's also doing some awful experiments to it because she is awful and she is trying to you know see how the transformers move and what their reactions are so you know poor skids who got turned in by Donnie Finkelberg so Donnie Finkelberg turned on the transformers turned in skids thinking simply that you know maybe they question him or something not that they take his face off pull out his brain shock it with electrical shocks you know just to see how it works uh, Donnie is feeling really bad about this, and, uh, he's, you know, internally, he's just, like, he, he's feeling, he's feeling awful about it, he, he turned in skids, and, uh, terrible, uh, terrible thing that's happening to skids right now, but Circuit Breaker is getting information out of skids' brain, he, she keeps seeing these images, and she sees images there of Optimus Prime, and Donnie says that that's Optimus Prime, he's the leader of the Autobots, and talking about, you know, their mission, but Circuit Breaker will hear nothing of it because she is just so hell-bent on destroying the robots that she doesn't care if any are good or bad or whatever because in issue number six, she was attacked and, and she was part of an accident when Shockwave attacked the oil rig. She got electrocuted. She became paralyzed, almost fully paralyzed, and now she permanently has to wear this uh, crazy get up there and she is now she's now circuit breaker and at RAT which is rapid anti-robot assault team at their headquarters they now have a bunch of the transformers so they have actually 13 transformers in there there's only 12 heads on the wall Skid's head's not even on the wall it's off of his body but it's not on the wall so I, who knows where Skids' face is. But with Donnie being there, he's actually been able to name all the characters and put their names on the different flatbeds where their bodies are. And, you know, he's feeling pretty awful about this whole thing. Seeing all these Autobots, they have all the aerial bots because at the end of the last ep, uh, issue, uh, the aerial bots got blasted by Menasar and, you know, they were down for the count. So Rat figured... Well, we'll just we'll just capture these guys too. Well, that's what's happening with Rat, and over at the Decepticon base, Megatron is just uh, you. You start to feel for Shockwave and how he understands that Megatron is not a good leader. He's crazy. He's he's absolutely nuts, and he comes up with these convoluted, ridiculous schemes. So what he did does, does in this issue is he summons. Run about and run amok from Cybertron. You know, it's just using that space bridge whenever the heck he wants. Not that it's going to take up any of the precious resources he's trying to steal from Earth or bring to Cybertron to rebuild Cybertron. He doesn't. I, I don't really believe he wants to do that. So he tell he brings these guys in just so that they can deliver a message to Optimus Prime to that Megatron is challenging him to a duel to the death. Okay. Um, that, that seems really convoluted to do that. And Shock Soundwave says to him, but, you know, I can open a radio frequency directly to the Autobot base if you want me to. And for his suggestion of something perfectly reasonable, Megatron smashes him in the face with an exhaust system. Right there. Just takes the exhaust system and smashes him in the face. And why he has a throne of cars? No idea. Uh, no idea. So, Runabout and Runamuck, he asked them if they have any suggestions. They do not. No, they are oh, they're perfectly fine to take off. 
But they're driving down the road, knocking cars out of the way, and they're talking about it. And they're like, you know, Megatron's been gone for a million, four million years, and he, he you know, comes back thinking like he runs the place. Well, he doesn't run me, he says, uh, runabout says to, uh, run amok says to runabout. And so they go take off on a cross-country spree. The first thing they do is they pull into, I don't know, some Ho you know, Hojo's, Howard Johnson's, maybe. I don't know. And there's this uh, family, you know, this poor put-upon father is trying to bring his kids to a nice trip all around America, seeing all these different landmarks. You know, it's a family trip that they're doing, something that people did all the time in the 80s. And he's looking at the map. But this poor, ungrateful little brat of a kid, Noah, he decides he's going to go out and write vacations on the pits on, on the wall. His father gets him. Noah's very defiant to his father. Run about and run amok. See that? And they kind of like the moxie of that little boy. That he's, you know, he's such a defiant little fellow, run amok. Not afraid to stand up to the bigger fleshling. And he's like, let's follow him. And so... Run about and run amok, follow this family on vacation. We go back to Rat Headquarters. At Rat Headquarters, Walter Barnett has arrived. Donnie Finkelberg says, look, uh, you know, you, I did what you wanted me to, I helped you out, now I would like to go home. He's like, no, we gave you a job. You, you are still important here, and you got to stay here. Great, all right. So they see a broadcast on the news about... All these different places that are getting this crazy graffiti all over them, like Mount Rushmore and the St. Louis Ar Arch and, I don't know, some football stadium in Wyoming. And so they're seeing this path that the looks like whoever's doing this is heading east. They haven't seen any of these giant robots who are doing this. Oh, I'm sorry, spoiler. A couple pages later, we're learning it's Runabout and Runamuck. Um, actually, we learn about this next because the family with the awful little kid are at... They're in Washington, and they're at the Washington Monument. And at the Washington Monument, the little little girl goes, Why are those cars on the lawn? And they're riding over this way. Well, that's because it's run about and run amok with giant drums of paint, and they proceed to put graffiti all over the Washington Monument. And so they're, you know, putting they're spray painting the Washington Monument, and they're like, Oh, I wonder why these humans, you know, they don't you know, they never get angry about what we write. It's because you're writing in the Transformers language and nobody can understand it. Well, you know, he said, the other one says, they, well, you just seem confused. And so, you know, they take off. They take off well before Rat shows up to see what's going on. So, you know, here's Circuit Breaker. She wants to take control of the situation here because it has to do with the robots. And, um... You know, Donnie Finkelberg says, well, you know, you, the Autobots could help. They're heroes. And she's like, well, well if they're such heroes, why aren't they here? And, uh, you know, Donnie, again, continues to feel more remorse for turning in skids. He's like, every time they've offered to help, they've been attacked, which is, uh, is perfectly, you know, true. Every time the Autobots have, have tried to help, they've been attacked or they've been captured and dissected and, you know, experimented on with the craziness of of uh, Circuit Breaker. Well, the family comes up, and they're called the Actons. And the Acton family, you know, explains that, you know, they've everywhere that they've been, this graffiti's shown up. I wonder if it's a coincidence. Yeah, it's not a coincidence, you moron. So, you know, they're talking to... They're talking to the, the Acton family like, well, these robots have imitative behavior. Maybe they notice something about graffiti, and the mother's like, no, no, no graffiti. Meanwhile, this terrible little kid Noah is eyeing the rat hardware like, you know, he wants to go and take over the world with it. You know, terrible, terrible little kid. Anyway, so they head off, and they're going to go to Independence Hall in Philadelphia, and they figure that's where they're going to go next, but run about and run amok, follow them, and they go to, they go to, you know, spray graffiti all over the building. But at the same time, Rat is there, and so Circuit Breaker confronts them. They get into a fight, but the Rat squadron leader realizes, hey, there's a ton of civilians all around, and we're, you know, smashing up the place. Somebody's gonna get hurt. We better stop this. But Circuit Breaker does not break off the the 
the attack. Meanwhile, awful little kid goes running into right directly into the uh, you know into the fight. Almost gets flattened into you know street pizza by the falling of some of some building. Meanwhile, you know circuit breaker goes. Oh hey, wait a minute. What am I fighting for? I'm fighting to protect people. That's why I'm fighting these robots. Oh maybe I should go protect this kid. And as she does, she gets shot for her for her uh, heroicism by runabout and runamuck, knock her out. And they break a couple of her ribs, and you know she's she's in bad shape. She's knocked out. So Walter Barnett benches her, puts her back at the Rat headquarters, which is headquartered in New Jersey. Uh, and while she's there, you know Donnie starts talking to her and says, you know, it looks like you want to get out of here as much as I, because there's no reason for Donnie to be there anymore. And she's like, well, I can't go anywhere, and they they bench me. I don't have anyone who help who can help me, and he suggests that the robots there can help him, uh, can help her. She could wire herself to the robots and control the robots. Just ask them. So we'll see what happens there. The next stop on the whirlwind tour for the Acton family is to the Statue of Liberty. So the Statue of Liberty gets cleared out uh, this time so that Rat can engage with the uh, battle chargers run about and run amok, and run about and run amok. They take the Staten Island and Theory over to the uh, Statue of Liberty and they start attacking the rat uh, people at the at the Statue of Liberty. And now they finally learn English and they write all over the Statue of Liberty: "Humans are wimps," and that starts to make the humans mad because they can finally understand what run about and run amok have been graffiti spraying everywhere. And Rat is basically uh, decimated by Runabout and Runamuck. But along comes a barge, and this barge has this Frankenstein's monster full of spare parts of all the Autobots that were there. Because, you know, we didn't have time to put their faces back on and their brains back in their bodies. But instead we had time to make this gigantic robot and strap a circuit breaker there like a giant battery slash, you know, remote control. We had time to do that. So she flies up to attack and they attack and fire on the runabout and runamuck, but runamuck shoots at shoots back at her and the robot protects her instinctively. Hmm, maybe they aren't so bad after all. She didn't give them the the uh, message to go and you know save her or anything like that. Uh, runamuck shoots the Torch off of Lady Liberty, it starts falling towards the Staten Island Ferry, which for some reason didn't go and move out of the way. Anyway, it starts falling uh, down. They dislodge one of the hands from the robot to go and capture that and bring it back up to Lady Liberty and reattach it. Uh, the Frankenstein's monster for Circuit Breaker robot blasts Runabout and Runamuck right out of the sky and they go splashing into the harbor. So there they go, splashing into the harbor. So at the end of the episode, or the issue, the end of the issue, I don't know if they've, you know, recovered the bodies of Runabout and Runamuck. Whatever they were, whatever their fates are, we don't know yet at the end of this issue. But back at Rat headquarters, Walter Barnett fires both Donnie Finkelberg and Circuit Breaker because they let the 13 Transformers go. Okay, so are they walking around with heads and faces missing? What What's happening there? Because it's only a few hours after they got back. Plus, they made this giant robot out of the spare parts. Who had time to reassemble all of the Autobots and send them back, you know, wherever they're, they're going and, and leave? Nobody? <sighs> Plot holes, craziness, who knows? Well, Donnie starts to talk with, with uh, Circuit Breaker, but she's not hearing it. She's like... That's it. I'm sorry that I ever struck a deal with those machines in the first place. Soon they will be sorry. So she still got this vendetta. Even though one of them protected her. The, you know, the, the, the amalgam of Autobots that you've been experimenting on and torturing for, for months, you know, weeks, months, whatever. I don't even know how long. The timetable's really off here. And they helped you. And, you know, to repay that, because you got fired from this job where you can go and, you know, play 
evil experimenter on the and torturer to the robots, uh, you're going to make them pay because they helped you and you let them go in a moment of humanity. Anyway, Donnie Finkelberg goes home to his crappy uh, apartment in New York. It's, he's in uh, Manhattan's Upper West Side. It's a six-floor walk-up. So he goes up to his, his house. I mean, his apartment, and he flips on the TV because he hasn't looked at the TV in a while. And on the TV, there is a newscast talking about the damage that occurred to Lady Liberty, and it's going to cost between forty and sixty thousand dollars. And won't people help because you know the the Statue of Liberty had just been renovated, and and now it's been defaced. So Donnie, in another a very selfless moment. Signs over his entire check, his blood money check, from Rat because of his selling out skids. Signs it all over to that Liberty Fund so that they can fix Lady Liberty. Well, the issues have been fast and furious with a bunch of new Transformers every single issue. And the next issue that you're going to see tomorrow is coming with even more, even more robots. We're going to see... The Protectobots and the Combaticons, and then Optimus Prime is going to fight Megatron a battle to the death. Well, how'd they get the message to him? Are we going to find out how they get the message to him? Because Runabout and Runamuck, the Beavis and Butthead of the Transformers world, were given the duty to go and tell Optimus Prime, but instead went cross country, spray painting everything with their Decepticon language, saying humans are wimps, and then, you know, another one of Megatron's flawless plans happening there. Anyway, this is Drew Bennett from Big Damn Kid. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as Big Damn Kid. You can also find me here making videos every single day. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you've been watching and enjoying, and uh, I'd love to see more people commenting. Please subscribe. Tell your friends. I uh, also want to point out that I am an affiliate for Loot Crate. You can see one back here. This is a shirt from Loot Crate. This is uh, the original. Do you know what uh, Mario's name was uh, originally? was Jumpman. So this is Jumpman from 1981, officially licensed shirt from Nintendo, exclusive to the Loot Crate uh, for the Origins box, which was the January box. And next month, we're going to have the Build box, which is going to include something from LEGO Dimensions, which is something that I also enjoy, and maybe I should do some videos on that too. But I hope you're enjoying the Transformers one. I'm going to continue on with that, and thanks for watching.